I'm Larry Murphy, coming to you from East Tennessee. Uh, I'd like to take just a moment of your time uh, to share with you something that is uh, important to me. And let me begin by pointing out how that uh, numerous words have many different uh, meanings, sometimes completely, you know, different. Uh, well, take for instance the word crack. Now we can uh, use uh, the word crack uh, and say, well, I'm going to bake a cake, so I need to uh, crack a few eggs. And sometimes my fingers get a little stiff, so I need to, oh, ouch, mm -hmm. sorry about that. <laughs> well, let me move right along. Uh, we can also use the word crack, uh, well, when someone is crazy. We might say they have a cracked up. You might hear a group of people talking some words and they might say, have you heard what happened to Larry last week? Don't tell anybody, but I hear he cracked up. Yeah, that's right, cracked up. Now, while there are numerous meanings to the word crack and other words, when it comes to the word salvation, there's only one definition a one-word definition, and that word is Jesus. He is salvation. As the Apostle Peter explained in the book of Acts, he says, There is a no other name given under heaven according to which men and women must be saved. There, though, are many crackpots out there, what I call salvation counterfeiters that are offering a, well, counterfeit salvation, uh, preaching, singing about, writing about counterfeit Jesuses. And it's understandable that we have so many salvation counterfeiters out there today. I mean, Christianity is a very lucrative business, believe me. In the year 2013, there was over $82 billion that was given to religious institutions. In addition to that, there were billions on top of that that was spent on Christian merchandise. So when you've got a business this lucrative, I mean, you're bound to attract a certain number of uh, unethical, unethical individuals you know, to it to try to get onto the gravy train. It is well, it creates a lot of problems. And uh, one problem with this that I want to point out is that we, we have a lot of good people out there in the community. They're, they're good people. They're believers. They're Christian. Many of them, I mean, are active, you know, very active in their churches. But so many of them, they haven't read that much of the Bible for themselves. Pretty much what their faith is based upon is what someone else has told them is in the Bible. That's putting, that's putting yourself in a vulnerable situation. You know, with all these counterfeiters out there. Because if you don't know your Bible, then a counterfeiter can come along and They'll tell you pretty much anything they want to, and they can make it sound real pretty. Just make it sound real good. And you're not going to know any better. You've never read any different. And I mean, the more likely what they're going to be preaching and teaching is going to sound, well, it's going to sound good, sometimes better than what you're going to find in the Bible itself if you're looking to uh, satisfy an itch, desire that you've got going Another group of people I'm uh, concerned about is that there are, uh, again, good people, a lot of good people that uh, are saying that uh, they reject Jesus, that they are not a believer. 
And uh, I'm afraid that in many of these instances, it's not really Jesus that they are rejecting. It's the counterfeit Jesuses. They don't want anything to do with the counterfeit salvation, which in many instances is all that they have uh, any knowledge of. It's all they've ever experienced. It's all they've ever heard about. It's all they've ever seen. And I can understand why they wouldn't want anything to do with this counterfeit salvation because I don't. I reject this uh, counterfeit uh, salvation. I reject these counterfeit Jesuses that are so prevalent out in the culture today. Am I cynical? <laughs> you bet I'm cynical. It's biblical to be a cynical believer. In 1 John chapter 4, the author tells us, don't believe every spirit. You know, every preacher, teacher, musician, singer, you know, whoever's coming down the pike supposedly talking about Jesus. He says, test them. Check, check, check them out. Question. Be cynical. Double check, fact check what they are singing about and preaching about in the Bible yourself and then make your decision. Base your life upon what you read in the Bible, whether they be, as John continues on, a false prophet or a true prophet. Because he says, there are false prophets out there among us. And don't worry about being a cynical believer. Uh, it's not a question of having faith in God. We're not questioning God. What we are questioning is men and women. And we're saying it's not God that we don't have faith in. We're saying, I don't have that faith, much faith in men and women. And I myself, I have lived long enough to have been burned enough times to know that you can't always believe what someone is telling you, promising you, and telling you is the gospel truth. If you are suspicious of what people are telling you, 99% of the time, that's going to prove in your favor. Be a believer. A believer in the real Jesus. Enjoying real salvation. Be a smart believer. Be a cynical believer. And thank you. And goodbye. See you later.